Okay, guys, you can start. Okay, whenever you have uh, ready. Um, all right, I'll start first. So my group is Gen um, my group is composed of me, Jennifer, Jordan, Navan, and Rafael, and this is our presentation about periodicity. Right. So before we talk about periodicity, we must understand what is atomic radii. So what is it? So atomic rad radius is used to compare different atomic sizes, generally the distance between the nucleus center to the boundary of the surrounding electron shell. While there's many ways to measure atomic radius, as you can see here, metallic, van der Waals, and ionic, the most commonly found is covalent radii. So this is the one that we are commonly calculating. Um, uh, however, um, it's found by it, by dividing the distance between the two um, two nucleus of atoms that are not chemically bo uh, bonded. However, my previous statement that said that covalent red eye is the most commonly found, but there are the but there are exceptions, and these exceptions will be elaborated by my fellow colleague now. Okay. There's a question of why argon does does not have a covalent radar. Before we answer that, let's see what a covalent radar is. A covalent radar is a measure of size of an atom that throws back to the covalent band. It's usually measured in picometers. If you add two covalent radii together, you get the covalent bond length between the two atoms. Right here. Argon does not have a covalent radius as a major gas of group 18. It does not have a bond to one another. Instead, you can find their atomic radii using their TDW radius. First, we find the distance between the nuclei of two neighboring atoms by touching and not chemically bonded to each other. Then we simply divide the value by two. As there is no element overlap of electron clouds involved, the result will be greater than the single covalent radii of any given element. That Uh, what is the trend of atomic radius across the period? The trend is that it goes down from taking period three, for example, from N8 to all the way up to chlorine, it's gonna go down because uh, the shells remain the same, but uh, the proton count and nuclear charge is getting bigger. However, for argon, it's gonna be bigger but it's not included there because it doesn't have covalent bonding. Argon is a uh, group 18, so it has a complete configuration. Therefore, it can only form VDW bonds when pressed together. So uh, when we use the calculation with the formula from slide one, it's gonna give a way bigger value, but that's because it's not covalently bonded. Uh, let's try to further explain what, uh, the atomic radius trends across the period. Um, as you can see in the graph, take for example, period three, as you go from left to the right of the period, you can see that the atomic radius decreases. This trend happens uh, across all periods, not just period three. The reason for this trend is that as you go across the period, uh, each, elect uh, each, each atom uh, gains an electron and a proton. The electrons occupy the same principal quantum shell, therefore Schrodinger effect uh, stays constant, while the proton causes the atoms to become more 
positively charged. And as the effect of increasing protons are stronger than the incre uh, increasing electrons, the nuclear attraction increases, which causes the nucleus to attract the electrons more strongly. And the outer shell is in turn pulled closer, causing the atomic radius to decrease across the period. Additionally, although the graph does not show it, argon actually has a bigger atomic radius than sodium. This is because argon has a full electronic configuration, which means it does not have covalent bond, which makes the atomic radius of argon even bigger than sodium. Then, As for the ionic radar across the period, the the metals from group one to four will generally go down as they form cations, which cause the elements to lose their outer electron orbitals. These, uh, the loss in electrons and the, the constant nuclear charge causes the uh, atom to have less repulsion, causing the, outer, and the most outer shell to be cl uh, closely attracted to the nucleus, causing the radi uh, radius to be smaller. While for the anion starting from, in this case, for period three, phosphorus, the nonmetals will gain more electrons. Thus, the number of electrons will exceed the number of protons, increasing the repulsion between the electrons. And in both cases, the nuclear charge does not change. As for the melting points for across the period, the uh, uh, before silicon, all the way from sodium in period three, it will keep it will continuously increase, and silicon has the highest as it has giant, uh, a giant covalent structure. The increase in the melting point is due to the, their delocalized electrons strengthening their metallic bonding. Um, and before silicon, the elements are metallic. The trend and this trend allows them to increase as with each increase to the number of electrons donated to the sea of delocalized electrons, metallic bonding is strengthened. That's why Al um, has a higher melting point compared to sodium. Uh, is it done, Ashley? Uh, there's still more. Okay, but uh, can I ask about the sulfur? Why sulfur is having slightly higher? Oh, uh, sulfur is higher because, as you can see down there, sir, it says S8. So its VDW is going to be stronger because it has a, what do you call it, bigger molecule. Is it done? Oh, also say, uh, silicon is because it's a giant covalent structure. Sorry, I forgot to say. It's okay. So is your presentation done, Ashley? Is there any more slide? No, no more, sir. Good. Uh, good job, uh, group one, yeah? Uh, so this is recorded. I will actually uh, go through this video again to give you the marks, yeah? So let's actually move on to group number two. Uh, good morning. Uh, my group have me, Annabelle, Josh, and Kenneth, and today we're going to be talking about periodicity. Uh, the first one is about atomic radii. What is it? It's uh, half of the distance between two nuclei of the same atom. And then another way of measuring them is there's the, you can use metallic radii, Van der Waals radii, ionic radii, and covalent radii. Now regarding the periodic table, 
there's the the atomic radius it decreases across the period why is it is because when across the period there's the protons they increase they keep increasing in the nucleus and then the electrons they they're in the same uh, principle quantum shell then the shielding effect it stays constant so because of this because of increasing positive nuclear charge of the nucleus the atoms valence electrons they have a greater force they have greater attraction towards the nucleus and cause the and this become make the decrease in atomic radii Here we have the graphs for the atomic radius against atomic number and ionic radius against atomic number of period 3. The increasing nuclear charge attracts the outermost, also known as the valence shell electrons in the second principal quantum shell, closer to the nucleus with increasing atomic number. Going across the period from Na plus to Si4 plus, the ions get smaller for reasons similar to those for the decreasing atomic radii across a period. Negatively charged ions are larger than original atoms since each atom will have gained one or more extra electrons into their third principal quantum shell. Increasing repulsion between these electrons, however, however, the nuclear charge remains constant. The size of anions are inversely proportional to nuclear charge which means anions decrease in size as nuclear charge increases across the period. Okay. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the trend in this graph, if you can notice that the first three elements, they're all metallic, sodium, magnesium, and aluminum. However, it's not what we expect when we um, think of um, the melting points of these metals. So what... Um, sorry, metals have metallic bonding. That means they're technically sort of like cations in a sea of negative electrons. This electrostatic force of attraction is our metallic bonding. And the factors that affect it could be, um, for example, the number of electrons in the sea of electrons. So as we can see, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, group one, group two, group three. Sodium can lose one electron to form Na plus ions. Magnesium atoms can form Mg2 plus ions by losing two electrons. Oops, sorry. These Mg2 plus ions are more positively charged than sodium ions. Well, obviously. Therefore, they experience a greater electrostatic force of attraction between the sea of electrons and itself. Therefore, it will have a greater um, melting point than um, sodium. Well, okay. Uh, if you can see here, magnesium and aluminum, they don't have that big of a difference between their <clears throat> melting points. And why is that? Well, aluminum it, uh, usually forms Al3 plus ions. You would expect it to be mm, maybe higher, right? But no, because aluminum ions, Al3 plus ions, are, uh, relatively, have a relatively large positive charge. So when in a an ion uh, in a metallic lattice, <laughs> the metal cations of aluminum Al3 plus will attract the new um, electrons to itself. Therefore, it cannot fully um all aluminum ions cannot fully form Al3 plus ions. Thus, why there is a very small increase, very minuscule that you can't really notice between Mg and Al in melting points. Okay, for now, this is the melting point against the atomic number. Firstly, silicon, phosphorus, uh, sulfur, chlorine, and argon are non-metals. So, silicon's atoms form a giant covalent structure. Uh, silicon atoms are covalently bonded to other silicon atoms, again, atoms in a giant structure. Hence, it has the highest melting point compared to the other element in period three. The remaining elements in period. Wait, wait. Uh, the okay. The remain the remaining elements in period three are simple covalent uh, molecules, except argon because it is monoatomic. Uh, there are only vulnerable forces of attraction between 
uh, their molecules. And the strength of these forces of attraction between molecules is directly related to the molecular mole, molecules relative molecular mass. Thus, the melting point of these points are in order of S8, P4, chlorine 2, and argon. Uh, thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, well done. Okay, I like the PowerPoint slides. Okay. Uh, so I will give you the marks later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Group Two. So maybe uh, let's actually continue with Group Three. Hello everyone, today me and my group, Kira, Kendru, and Lindsay is going to talk about periodicity in chemistry. So what do we know about atomic radius? In general, we know that the atomic radius can be measured by dividing the distance between the nuclei of two identical atoms that are bonded together by two. Now, what are other measures of atomic radii? There are three other measures called metallic radii, van der Waals radii, and covalent radii. What makes metallic radii? It is defined as half the distance between the nuclei of two atoms in a crystalline structure or between two adjacent metal ions in a metallic lattice. Metallic radii decreases across the period due to an increase in the effective nuclear charge, but it increases down the group because of the increase in principal quantum number. Van der Waals radii is easily defined as half the closest distance between two equal and not covalently bonded atoms. This radius is usually larger than a covalent radius. Covalent radii can be obtained for most elements so it provides the best data for comparison purposes across a period. Sizes of different atoms can be compared using their atomic radii. There are, there are other measures of atomic radii, including von der Waals radii and covalent radii. However, covalent radii is more commonly used because it can be obtained for most elements and thus providing the best data comparison. As you can see from a diagram shown on the screen, size of atomic radii decreases from left to right across a period. As an extra information, noble gases do not have covalent radii due, due to its monoatomic nature, but its atomic radii can be measured from its van der Waals radii. This is because in the same period, elements have the same number of shells, so they all have equal shielding. <clears throat> However, since the proton number increases, the electron would experience a stronger attraction from the nucleus. This would cause the atomic radius to generally decrease from left to right. On another case, oxygen has slightly higher atomic radius than nitrogen, even though it has a higher proton number. Why is that so? This is because nitrogen has an electronic configuration of 2p3 having its orbital half filled, and hence there is less repulsion between the electrons. Oxygen, however, has an electronic configuration of 2p4, having one paired electron in one of its orbitals. This leads to inter-electronic repulsion and thus increases the atomic heat slightly.
Argon is a noble gas, and noble gases like argon, helium, and neon are monoatomic and do not have a covalent radius, as they do not form bonds with each other. For noble gases, their atomic ra radii can be determined from their van der Waals radius. This is found from the distance between the nuclei of two neighboring touching atoms, which are not chemically bonded together. On the left side, we can see the graph of atomic radius against atomic number for period 3. We can see that the atomic radius is decreasing as the atomic number increases. On the, on, on the left side, we can see that the graph of ionic radius against atomic radius for group 3, and Kera is going to further explain the graph. We can see from question seven that the lines curve down slightly from sodium to silicon before having a huge jump to phosphorus. After that, the line can be seen to curve down again. Why does this happen? Radii of positive ion is always smaller than the corresponding atom. This is because when an atom loses an electron, the number of shell decreases. Therefore, the radius decreases too. ABI of negative ion is always longer than the corresponding atom because when it gains an electron, negative ions experience greater repulsion than the repulsion in an atom. This is the graph of melting point against atomic number for period three. And then Kendrew and Nancy will further explain why it is drawn this way. The metallic bonding of sodium, magnesium, and aluminium can be described as a giant lattice of positive ions, held together by a sea of delocalized electrons, which comes from its valence shell. If potential difference is applied, these electrons head towards this. Sorry, these electrons head towards the positive terminals. The increase of melting point and electrical conductivity from sodium to magnesium to aluminum is affected by the number of electrons each metal donates into the sea of delocalized electrons. Aluminum has metallic bonding because each aluminum, each aluminum atom donates three electrons while sodium atom donates only one electron. Thus, aluminum has a stronger melting point. Silicon has a giant covalent structure, thus allowing it to have the highest melting point. Each silicon silicon atom is held to other silicon atoms by strong covalent bonds. All the elements after silicon, which are phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, are all nonmetals, and they exist as relatively small molecules. Even though strong covalent bonds are holding the atoms together, but the van der Waals forces are weak between the molecules, and thus not much energy is required to break these weak intermolecular forces to melt the elements, causing it to have a relatively lower melting point. So this concludes our presentation on periodic periodicity. So thank you for listening. Thank you guys. Okay, I like the design of the slide as well. Okay, so uh, let's actually move on to the next group, group four. Uh, sir, can I go to the toilet? Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm from group four and my fellow members are Michelle, Justin and Jonathan. Today we'll be presenting on the topic periodicity. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask us after we have finished speaking. So first off, let's discuss the atomic radius. So the atomic radii is known as half of the distance between the nuclei of two bonded identical atoms, as you can see from the picture on the side. Um, and the most common way to measure the atomic radius is usually the 
covalent radius as it can be found for most elements, hence making it um, able to provide better data for comparison purposes. However, um, other measures are include um, the metallic radii and also the van der Waals radii. Um, what a metallic radii is, is that it's the half of the total distance between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms in a meta metallic cluster, while the van der Waals radii is used to define half of the distance between the closest approach of two non-bonded atoms of a given element. So usually you can use van der Waals radii to measure for like noble gases and metallic radii is for like metals and covalent radii would be for gases like um, chlorine, for example. Then um, let's move on to argon. So why does argon not have a covalent radii? Noble gases such as argon do not have a covalent radius as they do not form bonds with each other. Hence, they do not have a covalent radii. However, you can measure them using the van der Waals radii. On the graph of atomic radius against atomic number, we can observe that the radii decreases as we go across the period. And as previously mentioned, there is no data for argon since it does not form covalent bonds. The reasons for the decrease are that as it goes down the period, the number of electrons and protons will increase, and the extra electrons will occupy the same quantum shell, while their shielding effect remains constant, and this causes the valence shell electrons to experience a greater attractive force from the gradually increasing number of protons in the nucleus. The trend on this graph for ionic radius against atomic number is different. There will be a steady decrease up until silicon, where there will be a sharp increase, then it will be followed by a steady decrease. The cations will be smaller than their atoms as they have lost their outer shell electrons and there will be less shielding effect when compared to their atoms. In addition to that, the nuclear charge will attract the valence shell electrons, which will be in the second principal quantum shell, and this will further decrease the radius. The effect will be different for an ion. They will get larger as they will gain electrons in their third principal quantum shell. This will increase the repulsion between electrons while the nuclear charge stays the same, which will in turn cause the size to increase. The graph on the right shows an increase in melting point from sodium silicon before a sharp decrease, before a sharp drop and an overall decrease in the melting point. The increase in melting point for the metals is caused by several reasons. The first reason is the amount of electrons that donates to the sea of delocalized electrons. And the second reason will be the, the nuclear charge of these ions. Magnesium has a higher melting point when compared to sodium and aluminum will have a higher melting point when compared to magnesium. This is due to the fact that aluminum will be able to donate more electrons so it will have a more positive charge and the sea of delocalized electrons will be larger. The larger amount of electrons will also let it have a higher electrical conductivity as more electrons will be able to drift through the structure. This will allow it to have a stronger metallic bonding between the nucleus of, uh, of the metal and the sea of delocalized electrons. Silicon has a higher melting point as it has a giant molecular structure and it has a high melting and boiling point due to strong covalent bonds between the atoms of the element. Not metals that come with silicon exist as small molecules and they have strong covalent bonding between atoms, but they'll have weak van der Waals forces between molecules. Van der Waals forces are dependent on the size of the molecules, which explains the, sm the small increase in the melting point. Phosphorus exists as P4 molecules, while sulfur exists as S8 molecules. S8 molecules are larger than P4 molecules, which means that it will have a stronger van der Waals, van der Waals force and compared to P4. The stronger van der Waals forces between the sulfur molecules is the reason for the increase in the temperature from phosphorus to sulfur. Chlorine exists as Cl2 molecules and argon exists as an AR molecule as it is a noble gas. So it does not form any bonds and this is why the melting point further decreases as the size decreases. So to summarize things, we have discussed what an atomic radius is along with a few other measures of it as well. 
Um, we have also covered how noble gases do not have an atomic radius, and we have also discussed the trends in three different graphs. The first one is the atomic radius against atomic number graph. The second one is the ionic radius against the atomic number graph. And the last is the melting point against atomic number graph. So are there any questions or need for clarifications? So any questions by anyone? So no questions. Is it done? Yeah, if none, yeah. then thank you. Thank you, group four. Okay, so let's continue with uh, group five. Good morning, everyone. Before I start, hi, my name is Dylan. My name is Angela. My name is Kianta. My name is Ella. And today, me and our group members will be talking about periodicity. Patterns seen across period three are seen across other periods too. The recurrence of the same pattern is called periodicity. Now, what do you understand about atomic radii? From my understanding, it is half of the distance between the nuclei of two identical atoms as shown in the figure below. We can also compare the size of different atoms by using their atomic radii. Moving on, there are other measures of atomic radii, such as the metallic radii, van der Waals radii, and covalent radii. For metallic radii, it is half of the distance between the nuclei of two metallic atoms in a crystalline structure. For the van der Waals radii, it is half of the distance between the closest approach of two non-bonded atoms of a given element. For covalent radii, it can be obtained for most elements, so it provides the best data for comparison across the period. Next, why don't argons have covalent radii? Although argon is in period three, they don't have a covalent radii, <clears throat> as noble gases, including argon, are monoatomic and they do not form bonds with each other. Furthermore, like I said earlier, argon gas exists as a single atom. So between these atoms, they are we, they have weak Van der Waals forces between these atoms, so Van der Waals radii is considered. Hello, next we have question number four. What is the trend of atomic radius across the period? The short answer to it is it decreases across the period. You must be wondering why. That leads us to our next question, question number five. Explain the trend of atomic radius across the period. Let's take period two, for example. Period three will be further explained by our next speaker. The first reason is because of its constant shielding effect. Across any period, there is a similar number of shells. For example, the simple electronic configuration of lithium is 281, and next to it, beryllium has 282, and so on in the same principle quantum shell. In conclusion, they all have three shells in that period, and shielding effect will be constant. Across a period, there is a greater nuclear attraction. This is because there is an increase in both the number of protons and electrons. Let's imagine that this magnet is the positively charged nucleus. And these electrons and these metal balls and paper clips will be the electrons. If I use one magnet, we can see that there will be quite a number of paper clips remaining. But if I add two other magnets and two other paper clips, you can see that a greater number will be attracted. This is because there is a greater force of attraction. Likewise, electrons are pulled towards the nucleus, resulting in a smaller radius. Thank you. Now, I'll talk about more about the graph of atomic radius against atomic number in period 3 elements. Like Ella said, across the period, number of electrons increases, but the shielding effect remains constant, and hence there is greater nuclear attraction pulling outer shell electrons to get closer to the nucleus and the atomic radius decreases. Argon is not included here because argon is monoatomic and like Dylan said, does not form covalent bonds and their radius is only measured by van der Waals forces, which is usually far greater. Here the graph shows the ionic radius against an atomic number for period three. As you can see, the radius usually decreases as the atomic number increases except between the silicon and the phosphorus where there is a sudden enlarged jump. 
The ionic radius is the distance between the nucleus and the electron in the outermost shell of an ion. The size of an element's ionic radius follows a predictable trend on the periodic table. The ions may either be larger or smaller, depending on the ion's charge. The positive ions would usually be smaller, while the negative ions would be larger. For the positive ions, when an atom loses an electron to form a cation, the loss of electron does not contribute to the shielding of the outer electron from the charge of the nucleus. The other electrons will get strongly attracted to the nucleus and thus they will get closer to it, which will also cause the radius to get smaller. For the negative ions, when the electron is added, the added electrons will repel more with the other electrons and there will be an increase in the size of the, of the ionic radius. This is also the main reason why there's a big jump between the silicon and the phosphorus because the silicon is positively charged while the phosphorus is negatively charged. In conclusion, the more electrons they lose, the more attracted the, the electrons will be and the shorter the ionic radius the shorter the ionic radius. The more electrons they gain, there will be more repulsion and the ionic radius will increase. This is the graph of melting points against atomic number for elements in period three. From this graph, you can see that from sodium, magnesium, up to aluminum, there's an increase in melting point. This is because of stronger metallic bonds as there are more delocalized electrons and increasing charge on the metal ions. Silicon has the greatest melting point because silicon has a giant molecular structure and has strong covalent bonds. The increase in melting point from magnesium to aluminum is smaller than from sodium to magnesium. This is because the difference in metallic bonding of magnesium and aluminum is smaller than sodium and magnesium. As aluminum forms a three plus ions and Thus, the outer three electrons in aluminum is partially delocalized. For the non-metals, they have low, lower melting points because they have weak van der Waals forces. Between phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, sulfur has the highest melting point because it has the most electrons and stronger intermolecular fo forces. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, very good in group five. Okay, I really enjoyed uh, your PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and also Ella's uh, effort there, yeah, very good. Okay, uh, so uh, I want to actually also mention about uh, Josh, yeah. Thank you for also highlighting about uh, the magnesium and aluminium, okay. This is what I wanted to ask, okay, but he actually found out about it. But please go and find out more, okay, because uh, the explanation that you gave, um, maybe there is more explanation to it because uh, when you look at the aluminium magnesium the way uh, whenever we look at the uh, melting point okay or when we look at the uh, the how uh, the melting point because of the metallic bonding this differs according to different um, uh, they have different structure Okay, so they do have different structure because of the structure that is going to be like, for example, when you look at sodium, sodium, they are going to be bonded like all the sodium atoms, uh, the ions are going to be added, uh, going to be arranged in a particular way. They, we call it as a hexagonally packed. So it means each, uh, each uh, sodium ions they are going to be surrounded by six sodium ions, something like that. Uh, when it comes to magnesium 2 plus and Al2 plus, uh, Al3 plus, they have different arrangement. Okay, so uh, they have cubic arrangement, they have different kind of arrangement. Because of this arrangement, uh, your melting point will be different. So it's actually outside of our syllabus. So it is expected that aluminium supposed to be higher than uh, magnesium, way higher. But it's actually kind of a closer because of that structure also that plays a role as well okay so i hope you can also find out more about that but again it's not so important for our syllabus what is important is going to be the graph okay uh if let's say let's actually try to summarize over here we, you have le uh, heard from five groups okay uh what are the uh this this uh under the periodicity, the part that you have covered is called the physical uh, 
trend, okay, the physical trend. Uh, so you see, um, you explained about atomic radius, okay, so the trend of atomic radius. Uh, so the graph, you should know the graph is actually going down, okay. Why? Because I think you already explained to me just now, the number of proton is more, okay. So when you have more proton, uh, there is more nuclear charge, shielding effect is constant, Okay, because the same number of shell, they are going to pull it closer. Okay, so it's going to become smaller. Okay, and then you, uh, we have learned about this trend about ionic, uh, ionic radius as well. Okay, so for ionic radius is good. I think all the groups have highlighted this. Okay, when you talk about positive charge, you are losing electron. When you're losing electron, there is one shell is being gone. Yeah, so it means automatically you can see that uh, there is two kind of trends. One is actually uh, going uh, different and another one is actually jumping from SI4 plus okay, to P, uh, uh, P3 plus, uh, 3 minus. Okay? The reason why, because I think when you receive electron, okay, automatically there is going to be, you are completing the shell. Okay? So it means you are going to be additional one shell compared to the positive ions. Okay, I think you can see that from your presentation. So that is actually the second one. Okay, so you see, uh, we have discussed about trend in atomic radius, trend in ionic radius. And you guys have discussed about also related to the melting point because you mentioned about this uh, metallic bonding is good. Okay, so group one, uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminium is metallic bonding. Then you mentioned about silicon. Silicon is giant uh, lattice, okay, giant molecular structure. Then after that, they are all going to be simple molecular structure. Uh, there is a increase, slight increase, okay, when it comes to S8, because S8 is, uh, there are eight atoms, okay, compared to Cl2. So the Van der Waals forces will be more. Okay, so we have addressed all that. So uh, the point, uh, the there is one, one part that I didn't ask you to draw the graph because I think uh, they didn't even give the graph in the textbook. But you need to also read about it. The electrical conductivity. Okay, so it is actually uh, explained together in the textbook with the melting point. You, uh, if you have prepared for it, you would have read about it the electrical conductivity. So if you have more electrons, okay, in the T of delocalized electron, electrical conductivity will be more, yeah? So you can see that uh, from sodium uh, to magnesium to aluminum, the electrical conductivity is increasing, yeah? But uh, from, uh, from silicon all the way to the non-metals, the electrical conductivity is supposed to decrease because they are changing into non-metal. Okay, so if they ask you to represent this in form of graph, you should be able to represent it in a form of graph as well. Yeah, so uh, going up, then they will decrease. Okay, so the uh, metal to non-metal. Okay, uh, that is going to be, let me summarize again. Yeah, so one is uh, atomic, atomic radius, ionic radius, melting point and electrical conductivity. Okay, that's going to be three. And the last one that we need to look at is going to be related to your first ionization energy. Okay, so these are the, uh, the one that I didn't actually ask you to do. Okay, so this is what I want to teach you now. Okay, first ionization energy. While I'm trying to connect uh, to, uh, to my Zoom over here, can someone explain to me what is first ionization energy? If it is, uh, what is going to be definition of first ionization energy? Maybe early, yes. can you actually try? Or someone else was trying, uh, who was trying just now? Uh, okay, Josh. The, and the amount of energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of a gaseous substance, uh, from a gaseous element. Okay, okay. Uh, the term is going to be gas, yeah? So you need to actually remove, okay, one mole of electron, okay, from uh, one mole of gases, uh, gases element, okay, under standard condition. This is first ionization energy. You can actually go and refer to the definition. It is very important. Will they ask you about the definition, okay, related to ionization energy? Definitely, yes, okay? You need to memorize this. 
because this is one of the popular questions when it comes to ionization energy. They will ask you about the definition. So you need to know what is the definition for ionization energy. But now for our syllabus, okay, if you notice now in this chapter, when you do your uh, planning uh, research for your presentation, you should know that we are talking about we are talking about uh, period three, okay? Period three, which is going to be sodium, magnesium, aluminium, okay? Uh, then after that is going to be silicon, okay? And then so on, okay? So uh, we are going to look from that aspect, okay? So you do, uh, even though, okay, the other periods, okay, they are going to follow the same trend, okay? But for your syllabus, okay, when you give explanation, when you draw graphs, okay, it is important to refer to period three, okay? But that doesn't mean that they, uh, the question cannot uh, ask you about other period, okay? The same trend applies, okay? So this is what I wanted to show just now, okay? So I was mentioning atomic radii, ionic radii, melting point, electrical conductivity is done by our presentation. So this is going to be done, have been covered in our lesson, okay, when you are presenting. So the one, the last one that I want to actually mention over here is the first ionization energy, the trend, okay, the trend. So if you look at this uh, graph, I've actually draw this graph for you. Okay, this graph is telling us about, okay, so if you look at the trend of this uh, period three, you can see sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Okay, if you can see generally, okay, the trend is increasing. The ionization energy is going to be increasing. Okay, if you ask me why, why the ionization energy is increasing, because simple, the, uh, when you have the atomic number increasing, basically the number of proton is increasing the nuclear charge is more. So if you have more proton, okay, so they are going to hold the electrons closer to themselves. So it's going to be difficult to remove the electron from, from it. So the ionization energy generally will increase. Okay, but okay, if I try to connect all the dots over here, okay, I do see some kind of pattern of increasing, okay, but there is going to be a pattern that we need to focus, which is going to be some abnormalities. Okay, the abnormalities is going to be from here to here, from here to here. We can see that aluminium, okay, they are going to have lower than expected. And you can see also for sulfur, they do have lower than expected. Generally, we are expecting them, all of them, the ionization energy to increase. Okay, the reason, okay, it is related to your atomic uh, configuration that we have learned last time, okay, in chapter, uh, earlier part in the AS, okay. So, if you try to write down the electronic configuration, okay, for magnesium, so the, it will, you will have this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. And when I try to write down the electronic configuration of aluminium, this is going to be the electronic configuration. The electron that you are trying to remove from the aluminium is at the 3p. Okay, and 3p, even they are, okay, uh, they are in the same principal quantum shell, okay. The 3P, okay, the subshell is further away, okay, from the uh, nucleus, slightly further, okay, slightly further. So because of, of it, okay, because they are slightly further from the nucleus, the attraction of the nucleus towards this electron is weaker compared to the attraction of the nucleus towards this electron. Therefore, you can say that it is easier to remove this particular electron. Okay, it is easier to remove this particular electron. So what is the explanation? This is in simple terms is distance. Okay, in simple terms is distance. That to explain about this part, yeah? So this one is done. So let's actually look at the sulfur, okay? So for sulfur, in order to decode for sulfur, so we need to look at the 
phosphorus. Okay, so let's actually write down for phosphorus. So I've wrote down for phosphorus. So it's going to be 3P3. And if I want to actually write down for sulfur, so therefore it's going to be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P4. Okay, and for 3P4, if I want to draw in terms of boxes, okay, so we can say for 3P3, in terms of boxes, I have three electrons. So each of them are singly filled over there. Each of them, when I say them, each of the orbital, okay, each of the orbital in the subshell, okay, they are going to be filled singly, okay. But, okay, when you look at 3P4, okay, you are going to have one of it to have, okay, is going to be paired. Okay, this pairing okay, will actually create what we call as spin pair repulsion. Okay, spin pair repulsion will happen. Okay, so the, the key point over here is the spin pair repulsion is going to happen. So the electrons, okay, they are going to repel, uh, repel with each other. Okay, these two electrons, they are going to repel with each other. So it means, okay, it means this... It's not, it's not good. Okay, so it means that this electron, okay, this electron can be removed easily, okay. So therefore, okay, the ionization energy for this sulfur, the first ionization energy of this sulfur is going to be slightly less than expected. Why? Because of the spin pair repulsion, okay. So there are two points over here, okay, uh, actually three, okay, three points, okay. For the ionization energy, you need to know how to draw this graph. That is the first point, okay? You need to know how to sketch this graph. How to sketch, it means randomly, if let's say I ask you to just simply sketch, you should be able to sketch and then show us this and this and so on. Yeah, you should be able to show this. The second one is, okay, uh, the second and third one is to explain about the observation for why there is a decrease, slight decrease, okay, between uh, magnesium and aluminium, why there is a decrease between phosphorus and sulfur. So this one is related to what we have learned earlier. So the first, uh, for the second part, this is caused by the distance, okay. Of course, the key point is distance, but you need to still explain using this, okay. You need to explain about this, like what I have explained earlier explain using that and the third one you need to actually explain based on the electronic configuration you need to mention about this spin pair repulsion okay spin pair repulsion now before i end the class today any question okay so if we yeah never uh sir i still don't understand the magnesium and aluminium small increase thing okay. in melting point okay do uh, you know, right, when, when we have this, uh, the same principle sh uh, quantum shell, so like, for example, 2S and 2P, if let's say last time when we draw the energy, yeah, okay, if you refer to energy, so if you look at energy, the 1S, okay, they will come over here, okay, the 1S. Then after that, uh, we are going to, Remember last time to fill in the electrons, we always fill in the electrons from lower energy level first, then go to the higher energy, right? So when you look at 2S, okay, 2S is going to be somewhere here. But do remember, 2P, even though they are in the same principal quantum shell, 2P is slightly higher. They are almost the same, but slightly higher than 2S. Okay, 2P, okay, 2P will be slightly higher. And then 3S, okay, 3S will be way higher. And 3P, they are going to be slightly higher than 3S. Okay, the energy level. So, and then if you move on, yeah, the one that I mentioned about, uh, there will be 3D, yeah, 3D. Since we have already mentioned about this, there will be 4S, okay, remember the 4S, uh, 4P and so on, it happened to be, I'll use this uh, yellow, yeah, it happened to be 4S come over here, okay, it happened to be 4S comes lower than 3D, 
Then you have 4P and so on. So I'll just put 4P maybe here, 4P and so on. Yeah. So what happens is, okay, when we uh, add in the electron, we end up filling up 4S, then 3D. Why 4S is lower energy? But now coming back to your question, okay, why uh, 3S and 3P? Yeah? Okay. So you see 3P is going to be higher energy. Okay, compared to uh, 3S. What is the reason? It's actually related to your uh, how they are arranged, why they have higher energy. Okay, it is depends on how they are arranged. Okay, it means that 3P, if you look at, let's say this is the nucleus, okay, you can assume, yeah, this is not the accurate way to represent. You can assume that 3S is over here. Okay, you can assume 3S is here. And then 3P is slightly further away from the nucleus. Okay, you can assume in that way. So it means that if let's say you are trying to hold the electron, let's say the nucleus trying to hold the electron and the nucleus is trying to hold the electron over here from 3P, it means that the strength of the nucleus to hold the electron here is going to be better compared to the strength of holding the electron in 3P. Why? Because 3P is further away. Okay. And that makes uh, makes the nucleus to fail to hold them properly. So you need to, if you want, if you want to remove one electron from here, it will be easier compared from removing one electron over here. So this is going to be way more easier okay, to remove. Okay. Can you understand everyone? So basically, uh, different subshell as well. Uh, they are different subshell and different subshells they are positioned slightly further away from the nucleus and because of that the attraction of the nucleus towards that electron in the subshell will be lower if it is further so that's why in summary distance so okay guys so I think there are the rest is actually waiting for the time it uh, it ends again it's, it's done yeah so, but what uh, what I want you guys to know today, okay, today we have covered all the parts, what we call as physical part. Okay, these are the physical uh, trends for periodicity. So starting from tomorrow, we are going to look into chemical aspects. Okay, like for example, reaction with water, reaction with oxygen, what happened, okay, and so on. Okay, so we will actually discuss about that later, yeah. So uh, that's it, okay, for today. Thank you, guys. Okay, bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Yeah, see you. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.